Speaking and Call Reporting. So with that, I'd like to just uh, announce a housekeeping item. If you have a question, you can click on the orange bar to open your GoToWebinar dashboard. Then once you open that dashboard, you're going to see a tab with questions on it. And within that tab, you can type your question, and one of our staff will be happy to answer that for you. So today I'd like to uh, announce our presenters for the webinar that we're holding. Um, first of all, we have Mr. Craig Sorensen, and he is the IT Administrator for Shepherd Motors. We have Mark Stevens, who is the Service Manager and Project Manager for Smead Communication Services. Uh, we have Augustine Matthew, who is our Senior Director of Product Management and Customer Service from Tribium Systems. Our senior technician is Donald Sheets, and he will be providing our Sonic View de demonstration today. And again, my name is Crystal Crampton. I'm the marketing manager for Tri Trivium Systems. Next, we'd like to show you our latest edition, and we've created a video specifically for automobile dealerships.
Come talk to us or to your phone system dealer about Sonic View and how it can help boost your bottom line. Okay, if anybody had any trouble uh, hearing that, I know it would maybe be a little a little bit low on the speaker. You can definitely log on to our website, www.triviumsys.com. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a YouTube button. If you click on that YouTube button, it goes directly to this video. So that would, you can take a look at it there if you had trouble hearing it. Next, we're going to go on to today's agenda. And the first item we're going to cover is some background on Shepard Motors, Speed Communication Services, Trivium Systems, and we're going to talk with Craig directly about his needs and why he chose Sonic View Call Recording and Reporting. We're also going to talk with Mark Stevens from Speed Communication Services. Donald Sheets will provide the Sonic View demonstration, as I discussed. And then we're going to talk about why ch choosing Sonic View Call Recording and Reporting is the best option. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So with that, I'd like to give you a little bit of background about Shepard Motors. Um, Shepard Motors is a family-owned dealership located in Eugene, Oregon. They're Lane County's exclusive dealer of three premium brands that include Volvo, Hyundai, and Volkswagen. They offer a fully stocked inventory of certified previously owned vehicles and a full service parts and auto maintenance shop. Uh, Shepherd Motors is dedicated to providing customers a high level of personal service and they call that first name service. So whether you're getting your car serviced or you're looking into purchasing a new car, they're going to know you by your first name and they're going to make a relationship with you as the customer. And you can visit their website at www.shepherdmotors.com. Now I'd like to give you a little bit of a background about Smead uh, Communication Services. Smead was uh, founded in 1946 and it's based in Eugene, Oregon, and it is now owned by Glenn and Paul Smead. The company provides customers integrated sound and communication systems, and their systems are unsurpassed in quality and support. Smead's number one goal is to provide a level of service and support that satisfies their customers and makes them feel good about choosing Smead for their telecom needs. And you can visit their website at www.smead.com. And now just a little bit of information about Trivium Systems and our background. We were founded in 1995, and we've been a leading developer of call recording, monitoring, and reporting applications for more than 15 years. We offer solutions for all sizes of business, from small startups to enterprise-sized uh, companies and businesses with multiple locations. Our software helps companies manage and specifically measure their marketing campaigns, enhance customer satisfaction, and reduce overhead costs. This helps streamline operation processes and allows companies to achieve quick and tangible ROIs. And you can visit our website at www.tribiumsys.com. So now we're going to have a little bit of a conversation directly with Craig Sorensen about his uh, telecom needs and about his call recording and reporting needs. Craig, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you uh, allowing us to broadcast our webinar from your location. Um, just wanted to ask you a little bit about your operations and marketing, and was wondering if you could give us a, an approximate amount of money that you spend on marketing prior to getting signed to you? Uh, well, on average, we we spend about 15000 per month on the advertising and marketing. And, uh, and that's complete, uh, that covers all media? All media, yeah, yeah. digital media, uh, flyers, events, billboards, everything. Okay. So previously, before you used um, Sonic View, call recording and reporting, 
you're using a lead generation service, is that correct? Uh, well, we still use lead generation services, but uh, we, before using Sonic View, we were using a service called Callbright, uh -huh. which is a, it's an off-site call recording type system. A third-party resource. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I remember, recall when we did the case study that we figured out that only 6% of your inbound calls were being recorded. Right, yeah. Yeah, so that was a very small portion of <laughs> the inbound and outbound calls that were being recorded and reported on. Um, so now, what types of media do you use to market cars? Do you use a typical billboard? Uh, we, we've got several billboards. Uh, we do a lot of digital advertising. Video, radio spots. Um, we have web advertising, Google AdWords, social media, um, and we plan and host events here occasionally. Okay, so you do quite a few different um, types of marketing and advertising. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what uh, your IT department provides? What kind of systems do they use? and who your customers are within Shepherd Motors? Sure. Uh, well, on-site, we have uh, we use a Windows domain. We have approximately 70 to 80 computers and servers on-site. Uh, we, we have a Citrix environment on-site. We've got 20 10 client machines, uh, and we use the desktop 4 and 5. It's kind of a mix of both of them. Uh, the phone system we use, the NEC 8100. Uh, we use the DMS uh, for our to manage the dealership. Uh, to, that's for uh, scheduling service appointments. Uh, it takes care of basically the entire dealership uh, and running it from I mean app, from uh, accounting everything. Uh, we also use a ADP CRM system for our customer database. You have a lot of different resources and tools that you use. Yeah. And approximately how long ago did you uh, install the NEC 8100 here, do you guys recall? Yeah. A year and a half ago? Okay. Now, so the sales department, the support department, uh, those are all fall within your customers? Right. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, much. I would say everybody in the dealership uh, would be a customer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you know approximately how many salespeople you have on the floor? I would say about 20, maybe about 20 salespeople. 20? Okay, yeah. so they're taking inbound and outbound calls, making outbound calls. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can you tell me, you know, as far as measuring your marketing campaigns, and you talked about all the different media that you use, how were you doing that previously? Yeah. How were you measuring whether a, you know a, a video or a, a online ad was doing well as opposed to a print ad. Well, it's kind of tough um, to do that. I mean, there's if it was an online ad, you could track clicks to your website or click throughs. But as far as actually you know tracking the lead all the way through, um, we really can't do that. We just can't. But if we run an ad in a newspaper or something like that, we can. Put a phone number on there, and then, and then look at how many calls are generated from that ad. But other than that, so there's not a real solid way to figure it out. We do use a company called Urban Science, uh -huh. and they you had mentioned that before when we were talking. Yeah, that, that's a third-party resource that does marketing campaigns. Oh, uh, well, that's Phone Club that does marketing. Oh, okay. We have a third party that they measure uh, our market share. Stuff like that. They're kind of the ones tracking how effective these are. More like a us. business analysis. Right. Firm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you are using yeah. a third party resource to do that. Yeah. And some of they're the ones that kind of control our advertising. Okay. Okay. So um, that third party resource did the business analysis mm -hmm. on your software application. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to um, move forward and talk to Mark Stevens, who is the Service Manager and Project Manager for Speed Communication Services. Thank you so much, Mark, for attending our webinar and being our guest co-host today. 
I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about Shepherd Motors as a customer and the differences you see from other customers within your work. And you had mentioned to me that you do a lot of work in healthcare. So how is Shepherd Motors different than these other vertical markets that you work in, where there is a lot of differences as far as installation? Or um, well, when Shepherd Motors. Uh our first installation with them it was back in 1999. I'm thinking there might be one before that, but they had installed um, an NEC 2000, and they just over the years kind of outgrew it with the new Volkswagen building. And so we presented to them the new SV8100 and discussed some of the latest technologies with um, automatic call distribution, routing um, for their service department and parts department. And... Um, one of the main things is is we've used um, Trivium for probably, I'm thinking back, I've been working for them since 2000, and we've used Trivium. So we've used the call analyst system with many customers, with lawyers and car dealerships. So you recommend schools, Trivium? And we've really liked Trivium and the features. Um, we put it into school departments. Just for caller ID in case someone does a bomb threat or something, they can go back and capture that caller ID information. Um, so uh, we've been very happy with Trivium. And we had just previously, uh, right before we did the upgrade with Shepard, attended um, a webinar about SonicView um, and learned about the um, call application. And um, it just meshed with... Uh, Shepherd Motors. There's a couple things they do that we saw. One is um, they give incentive, incentives to their salespeople for the calls they make, um, but you need to know how many calls they're making. So, so they, they have can, to be able to quantify can, that. So what we can do is every salesperson has an account code. They can dial that account code off the SB8100. It attaches that under their name, and they can pull up every call. It doesn't matter what extension they're dialing from. They can do their call campaigns, and those can be recorded. In there. Um, okay. So that's a really nice feature, really new. <laughs> Haven't done that with any other department, uh, with any other car dealership yet, um, and that was really innovative. Um, another one was, you know, with the call recording, just to make sure that the new salespeople are, you know, presenting Shepherd Motors correctly. You know, for quality assurance, I, it's not a big brother deal; it's just major quality assurance. See, you know, if you're um, offering the best level of service to the customers. Um, and then the last thing is with what he was saying with using Callbright, um, monitoring the systems, like you said, 6%. Yeah, <laughs> much, that's a pretty low figure. You, know, you can capture now 100%. Yeah. Um, you know, and those, those features are great. I haven't seen any other system out there yet that's offered that. And we really haven't bothered to look. I mean, we've used Trivium. It's worked. It's tested. It's proven. And um, so, thank you. That's great it. testimonial <laughs> to our product. Thank you so much. So. Okay, Craig, we're going to go back and talk a little bit more about um, some of the history of uh, Shepherd Motors and what type of call tracking system did you use prior to Trivium? It was Callbright. Was that, that was that Callbright. Yeah. Okay. And as we spoke, we do have quite a few limitations using that service. Yeah. yeah. And approximately how much do you think you were spending on that? So between five and 600 a month. And were, was there a contract with that? I don't think there was a contract, but one of the, another limitation of that is we didn't own the 800 members. Uh -huh. So when we left, uh, we didn't use their service anymore, they took the numbers. So we had to switch all of our numbers over to them. So they took your DID numbers that were assigned to you, and right. Yeah, I recall you had about approximately 20 DIDs from yeah, Paul, right? Of, okay. Yeah. Okay. And any, any phone numbers that were still out there, we found that another car dealership in Florida actually took those numbers over. And they were calling us saying, "Hey, we're getting some of your phone calls still, you know." Oh, oh my gosh. We didn't have those oh really? Numbers anymore? Yeah. Not only confusion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So. Um, Mark, what, do you have any other comments about the installation, about our uh, technical support team and the installation of SonicView? How did it go yeah. for 
you guys or yeah i was actually just discussing with craig yesterday and you this morning that um the installation is about the shortest topic of this whole thing um really it's just uh you know, in the SV8100, it's just a check mark and a port to say that, um, to access SNDR and where to point it to. So we just point it to the tri to the Sonic View server. And, um, you guys make a really simple little box. It's, I mean, it's nice and labeled. It's just run a little three foot patch cable out of the phone system off the, off the T1 or PRI to the, to the box and from the phone company. Um, do a reset and, and that's it. Uh, I, Don took it over from there. I just called him up and, and, uh, we got the server on, on the internet so that you guys could remote into it. And I just gave him the list of extensions and, and the line numbers. Okay. And he, he took it from there. He spent about maybe 45 minutes on it and it was done. I mean, wow. that's, yeah, the, that was our installation. I mean, it was quick. It was really simple. I think once we got our system all installed, it was probably a couple weeks later, we did a, we did a, another webinar with you guys on how to use it and the training. Uh -huh. Um, and, um, I haven't had to touch it since. Really? I mean, so. um, you know, so. Great. It's, yeah. About one of the easiest installs. You know, Pretty usually easy, usually when you get into a new product, you get a little worried. You're like, you know, it's a new product line. you got to learn, you know, there's a, you know, you got to figure out how it operates. You know, maybe you might spend five, six wasted hours on trying to figure out a product to get it installed. And this, this wasn't the case. I, I literally spent maybe 45 minutes on the install. Of it. That's great. So, <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, the uh, the installation is is it's very straightforward and and you know easy. Uh, it's very streamlined. Um, and uh, you were talking about the trains. We've now actually gone through and added on online training videos as well. It makes it really convenient. And uh, in addition to doing the web based training, you can actually go to the main, our web page and uh, through the customer portal log in and actually watch online training videos that go over the application. So that's another improvement that's happened and uh, it makes it very easy to get in and start using the software very quickly. Okay. Thank you, Don. Um, now we're going to move forward and Donald Sheets is going to give the presentation for Sonic View, the demonstration. So I'm going to change presenters. And Don, let me see when, tell me if you have the screen. I do. One second. There, can you see my screen now? I see your screen. Okay. So, um, it's, it's the, the software itself is, has a web-based interface. Uh, so, any PC in your office that has a web browser that supports Flash, you can get in and start listening to calls. So, there's no software to actually install on the user's desktop. So, again, getting in and listening to calls is, is really, you know, convenient and simple. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and log in, and we'll just go ahead and start uh, looking into how the application works here. And uh, so I use a, a username today that uh, it has administrative rights in the system, but that username and password um, can be set to limit what you see in the application. So you can actually... Uh, have a manager who can log in and only can see maybe their sales extension uh, for your sales team or for another manager that when they log in, they only see calls for the parts department. And so you can restrict access to the software based off of that username and password. And then you can also give specific, uh, um, you know, levels as far as do you want them to be able to download recordings and email them or do you want to have them just be able to listen to calls. All those things can be controlled by the username and password as well. And so here I've logged in, and we can immediately get in and start listening to a call. If I just double-click on a recording, a built-in player opens up and starts playing that call uh, right to your local computer speakers or headphones plugged into your PC. Uh, uh, you can fast-forward. I can rewind. I can uh, scan to a specific portion of the recording here. Pause. Resume playback. You know, full control of the uh, of listening to that call right to this built-in player. 
uh, it uses a flash based player also, so you don't have to worry about different versions of Windows Media Player or anything like that. Uh, it'll just play right through the flash player. Um, and so as you listen to a call, you can actually put additional information and store it with that recording. I could flag it for a specific priority so I can make it easy for me to find. Or I could even put notes in on that call. Maybe this is a call that came into a parts department and uh, it was for a, a vehicle that needed a, a new fan belt or something. You could just put that right in here and uh, and save that and that gets stored with that recording. So here's that flag and if I scroll over to my notes field, you can see right there. So I can later come back in and search by those notes to find that call. So right across, across the top, I've got some quick search filters. Show me all the calls, show me just the inbound calls, show me just the outbound calls. So if I want to see outbound calls for yesterday, I put out, I choose yesterday's date here. Hit my go button. I'll get a new tab that opens up for that search. And now we're looking at all the outbound calls. If you look, all the arrows are pointing to the right. And if I put my mouse over that, you'll see that they all say uh, out. So these are all the outbound calls for yesterday. Um, and then I can filter it more um, by clicking on the more button. It's really simple to remember. Uh, and then I can search by a phone number or partial phone number. I can search by the extension information. Um, all those things can be used. So I want to see all the calls that came in for a specific area code or phone number. I can go ahead and Put that in there, and pull up all the 503 numbers. Uh, the more of the phone number that I put in, the more specific I'll get on my search and finding my call. Once I've found the recording, I can share that several different ways. I can send an email that sends a link to listen to that recording. And so when you click on that link, uh, Windows Media Player, iTunes, whatever your default player on your PC opens up and listens to that call. And I can also generate an Excel or a PDF document of those calls. So if I just do a little bit wider search here, um, I can generate this out as an Excel or PDF document. So let's go ahead and do Excel. And I'll open that up in my Excel. And so once this opens up, we'll see all the details about the recordings. Uh, and also there'll be that link to listen to the calls. Here we go. So, so the, the type of call, the extension, the, the agent that took that extension here, I searched for outbound calls, so you'll see they're all outbound. Uh, all those 503 numbers that we pulled up, the duration, the time, and if I slide over here, that link to listen to the recording. And I can also generate that same report out as a PDF. There it is as a PDF. So I can give that Excel sheet, I can give that PDF document to anyone in my office. They can open up that PDF or Excel, click on the link, and whatever the default player is opens up and starts playing that recording right from that document. So I don't have to give them login rights. They don't have to log into the application. I just give them that Excel or a PDF document, and they can listen to those calls. I know, uh, Craig, you guys do you know a lot of advertising, so one of the things that you guys look for is being able to search by the phone number that, that they dial to reach you, that 800 number or DENIS number. And so we can search by those specific numbers in there and pull up the calls on a specific DENIS. Here we go. So these are all the inbound calls uh, that came in off our main number today. Uh, and so, again, you can go through and pull it by the 800 number uh, for those, those marketing and advertising and find out exactly how many calls are coming in off those campaigns. So that makes it very simple and easy to do. And then through our reports, we can run the same information uh, through our reports. And I think, Craig, that's what you guys are doing, right? Yeah. Right in the DNS reports? Yeah, and we have those it's set up automatically so that uh, every morning or uh, like Monday morning, you'll get a report for all the 800 numbers, and you can get another report for all the salespeople and calls they've made, and those just come in your email. So Right, yeah, so you can take that yeah. same report and schedule it to be sent out every day. Yeah. Exactly. So, or, you know, it's a weekly report or whatever, and as, as Craig was saying, that 
uh, no one actually has to go in and pull that report. The software knows who to email it to, when it's scheduled to run, and it emails that report to you automatically. Again, it's either the Excel or PDF document. So you can see how many calls you took, how much time you spent on those calls, and listen to those recordings from those links. And then we also have a call scoring module that allows you to grade calls. So for your sales team, your parts department, uh, you can actually listen to their recordings. And then using a scorecard that you can build out, uh, you can actually grade that call uh, for that agent's performance. I think I've got one here. It's called parts, yeah. And so, you know, all right here, did they get the... Uh, name and address and phone number and, you know, account number of that, uh, that person. Did they ask their qualifying questions? You know, is it making a noise when you turn or whatever it is they need to do to find out and try to troubleshoot and find out what the issue is? You know, do they get, you know, all the details? And then you can save that and it actually grades that call using that scorecard. Okay, 89 out of 100. And then you can go back and listen to those calls and review them. And so if I've gone through and I've created uh, some calls and uh, I want to sit down with those agents and re-listen to those calls so they can uh, get that feedback, you know, I could, I could listen to a call and grade it all day long, but if I can't get the information back to those, those agents uh, or salespeople, um, then, you know, it's kind of a wasted effort. So I can come back in here and say I want to see all my scored calls. I can sit down with that, with that agent. Listen to that call again. There we go. Okay. Here it is, that one we just created, parts department. I can re-listen to that. So I could sit down um, with that agent, pull up that call, listen to it, pull up the scorecard, and they can see exactly what they were graded. And as they listen to it, we just go down, okay, you did a really good job on this call. You got the name and address, you got the phone number, you got the account number like you needed, you did your qualifying questions, could have dug a little deeper here and maybe you would have found out that, you know, the timing, the, 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 it was slipping or whatever it was. You know, getting that information back to your employees so they can improve and, uh, you know, grow within the company. And then also focusing on the training side, uh, we have the ability to create a playlist or hot list. This allows you to take a, a group of recordings and have instant access to those calls. So as you listen to a call, maybe you hear some of your salespeople, your parts department, and you listen to it, and that agent handled that call really well. And so you want to use that in the future for, for training. Instead of having to go through and remember, okay, that was a call on extension 355 on in, on the, this phone number, you know, on this date, uh, you can just add it to the, to the, to the hot list or the, the playlist and just be able to listen to that call whenever you need to instead of having to do that search through the search criteria every time. Okay. So if you get new employees and you want to sit down with them and do training, you can have all your calls that you want to use in that training as, a, as part of a playlist. You just pull up that playlist and you start listening to those calls without having to do all that search in between time. Um, and uh, you can also, again, share those calls using that Excel or PDF document. And so you can create that PDF, email that PDF to the employees that are going to take part in that training, maybe a week ahead of time. Say, okay, during your downtime, I want you to uh, to listen to this call uh, or these group of calls that we're going to cover in the training session. Then when you go to do the training, it's review for them. They've had a chance to listen to those calls, and they're going to have a much higher retention rate of the information you're presenting about those calls. And you can do this both in PDF and Excel format, right, Don? Yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, what about the uh, screen recording? There is an option to record the screen. Do you have that available to? Yeah, let me see what I've got here. So, yeah, we actually have a, a small application that can um, uh, sit on an agent's desktop, and it will actually record what's going on on their screen um, while they're on the call, and it will basically store that information um, with the recording. Let me see if I can. My machine's really focused on these people to play back. There we go. And so here you can see that screen capture. So as it actually plays the call, and I'm listening to that call, uh, I can see what that, that agent was doing on the, 
on their desktop. So if they're entering information into um, your your CRM software, uh, maybe they're fumbling trying to find the screen uh, as they're on the call, and so they're kind of like, okay, can you hold on or whatever it is to that to that customer as they're trying to navigate through their their collection to, to, through their software through their contact management software. You'll know by watching the video that you need to sit down with them and maybe give a little bit more training on how to use that software um, just so they can get the information entered in quickly and efficiently and, and not have to have the customer waiting as they fumble through these things. So that yeah. screen capture can be a big asset. Yeah, this typically we see, this is Augustine, this typically we see uh, used by inside sales teams and marketing teams within auto dealerships. Uh, typically, m most dealerships have a internet marketing uh, division and uh, most of the calls get routed through those division, uh, you know, people sitting and receiving calls. So how quickly and efficiently they navigate through those screens and help the customer effectively uh, is something that you can monitor and manage. Uh, so as a result of seeing these things, you can decide, okay, do, do, do the agents require a little more training on how to find information or completing the right processes they follow within the business? Uh, so the screen uh, recording as well as the voice combined together, you can see how the agent reacts to the customer's call, you know, re request or requirements, and how they are navigating and uh, using the tools within the organization. Thank you. Go ahead, Don. Yeah. So again, the ability to search based off of the date, the time, the direction, the phone number. Also by the uh, the 800 numbers that were used to dial into your your uh, dealerships, being able to automate those reports um, and uh, using the call scoring and playlist, being able to train uh, your employees, uh, you know, to to meet your your standards. All of those things are integrated and uh, very easy to use through the application. So, Craig, maybe you can, uh, you know, add a few words about, you know, how you use the system on a day-to-day -day basis or, you know, as a part of your business process. Well, on a day-to-day -day basis, like Mark was saying, we, we mainly use it for the, the sales staff. Uh, they have a certain amount of calls they have to make per week, um, and those have to be logged in using the account code function. Uh, and then the managers would go through and listen to those calls or, or pull reports on if they made their calls or not. And they've set up pay plans based on if uh, the sales staff has used the uh, – if they've made their phone calls or not. Uh, and then uh, I know that the general manager will go through and listen to calls every now and then uh, just to make sure, you know, quality-wise, everybody's uh, you know, following through with the phone call correctly. Um, and the way that I use it on a day-to-day -day basis is, is mainly if someone's telling me that the phone they can't get through someone, the phone system's not uh, behaving correctly, I'll just go in and listen to the phone calls and find out what, what actually is happening in there. That's interesting. That's for, uh, that helps you with the day-to-day -day manage, managing and maintaining the system based on the customer requirement. Right, yeah, yeah. Yep. And so... Uh, what I heard is you, you have a compensation plan for your sales staff based on certain parameters that you track through Sonic View. Right. Uh, and secondly, uh, for you as a administrator who is ma maintaining the system, you use it as a tool to uh, you know, listen to the problems, understand the uh, symptoms, and you know, deal with it. Right, uh, yeah. And, and before, with the system we had before, that wasn't possible. Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, um, the uh, the now we talked about the sales side of it. You talked about the administrator, how it helps you as an administrator. Now on the marketing side of it, uh, Craig, if you could explain uh, how this helps, and you know we talked about a lot of things. I just wanted to kind of see if you can summarize how this benefits your marketing uh, department. Well. Uh, we, since we've had the new system installed, we haven't ran too many campaigns as far as uh, uh, ads in the newspaper. We found previously that we've ran ads in the newspaper, Nickel Ads, or whatever it might be, and there's just not a whole lot of volume there. So, um, But, I mean, what we do know and what we can use the system for 
is to track phone calls that are coming in from uh, our third-party lead generation services. Uh, so we can see, you know, we can match up. If the, if the lead source is telling them they sent us 10 phone calls, we can go into the system and try to find those 10 phone calls and listen to see if those phone calls actually came in. Are they calling? Are they hanging up? Um, and, and you can actually, you know, compare, compare data to see, because sometimes in, in this business we're paying for these leads. So, uh, if we're paying for 10 leads, we want to make sure that these 10 leads that we got are quality leads. And so you can listen through based on pulling the data from the 800 number specifically and then, uh, and, and verify the value of the lead that's coming in. Did you say that you also have uh, about 100 CIDs that you purchased through this, uh, uh, your phone carrier? We have, yeah, we have over 100 DIDs. You do? Yeah. Uh, apart from the apart from 800 numbers, so, apart from all those, yeah. So you need to track those as well. Can you use the system to do that? Right. And okay. another thing we can do, too, is uh, we can, say, our parts manager can pull. Uh, he wants to listen to all the, the parts phone calls that came in on this parts phone number. He can go in there and verify, you know, all the all the calls that came in. And a lot of times you'll get a call in and someone will someone will get upset or something and, and then they can get it they can call in and find out, you know, where did this call go wrong? Uh-huh. So, so they can mm-hmm. escalate it to the management. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's a bad situation. Yeah. Okay, Don, did you want to proceed? Yeah, actually and I uh I think we've covered these, these aspects. There was actually a question that came in, uh, kind of relate, relating to scalability. And there, they, they had asked what the biggest part count that Trivium supports, and can it support a combination of digital and analog and uh, voice endpoint? Maybe Augustine, you can uh, kind of address that. Yeah, Don, I'm I've taken up to answer some of the questions that are coming through. So uh, oh, okay, I'll handle that. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, all right, great. I'm sorry, Don, you asked me something uh, just before that. Did you want me to talk about something? Yeah, if you, uh, you said you were taking some of the questions, but I thought that may be one that we wanted to address to everyone was basically about our scalability. They had asked if uh, how many ports and what our scalability as far as being able to record and also uh, being able to support legacy equipment. So. Yeah, we'll reserve that for the Q&A time. Uh, uh, but okay. at this point, we want to take collect all the questions and uh, okay. we'll let Okay. Um, Crystal, you uh, want me to pass control back to you? Yeah, if you could. We're going to do something a little bit fun here. You could pass the control back to me. We're going to actually, take if a- you could, if you could just take it, because sure, I'm not sure which ones. There's several of us listed in there, and that'll be easier if you take it. There we go. Okay. So show my screen. Do you see my yep, screen? I, yes? Yep. Yep, I see yeah. Okay. So we're going to do something a little bit fun here. I'm going to ask a polling question, and this is for our existing, for our dealers. Um, I'm going to launch this question. Give you a couple seconds to answer that question. So, Crystal, uh, how how would you answer these questions? Um, There's two little drop-downs. There's two little check boxes. There's a yes and no that the viewers see. So, the the attendees can just click on the box and mark their presence. Yeah, I understand that, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows what needs to be done here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to close that, and I'm going to share the results. Oh, it was there. There it goes. Did everybody see the answer? Yeah, we see that. Okay, cool. Let's do another one. Okay, second question.
Okay, I'm going to close that one. Just a few seconds here. And now I'm going to share the answer to that one. Can everybody see the answer? Yep, we can see that. So it looks like... Uh... Great. Most. A few little questions, polling questions, if that we give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the PowerPoint presentation. Don, can you see my screen? I'm still seeing the uh, polling answer, that last polling question. Okay, let me just put that away. There we go. I see, your, I see the PowerPoint now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as after Don's wonderful demonstration of Trivium Systems Sonic View, call recording and reporting, I just want to finish up and summarize and say that we have the most comprehensive call recording and reporting solutions for our customers. And Augustine, I was wondering if you could speak to some of these modules that I'm pulling up on the screen here, specifically the Google Analytics module sure. that is just launched for our product. Yep, I can do that. Um, uh, all the other, uh, you know, bullets that you brought about, like uh, modular design, scalable design, uh, all that is, the, you know, the solution architecture allows you to, you know, have a few ports to hundreds or thousands of ports if needed uh, for recording. Uh, it can be distributed architecture where you can deploy uh, in the database in one, the files in another, uh, in application server and web servers on another system. If you wanted to kind of distribute it for some reason, you could do that. So it's very scalable. It's very robust. Uh, and it, uh, it has many, a support module that also allows you to keep tab on what's happening. Uh, it's almost like a health monitor for the system. Uh, Tamper proof uh, recordings and information. If a customer is uh, concerned about security and the ability for uh, meaning uh, hacking, you know, uh, protecting it against hackers and things like that, you can always protect that with as much level of security as you need, including SSL and certification. Uh, certificates, you can protect the entire data with 256 and great encryption if needed. Um, automation, we all talked about it enough, so I'd skip that. Uh, it definitely is, uh, makes it much more easy and simple to use uh, the product. Uh, if you know there are certain things that uh, you want to do on a repeated basis, you can automate it and the system will deliver the data where you need it, how you need it. Uh, screen capture, we talked about it already. Um, uh, the recording system also gives you ability to define what you want to record and what you do not. Uh, so uh, there are certain different customer scenarios where you want to have uh, uh, those rules defined. Uh, we saw extensive reporting capabilities that we talked about. Don had demonstrated it. Uh, you can always play back recordings and the screen recordings that you have captured for uh, the, the agent's calls on the phone. Uh, and scorecard agent scoring. So we've covered all that aspects. One of the newer features that we have introduced in uh, Sonic View for uh, specifically for the you know, auto dealership segment is the Google Analytics part of it. Um, as we talked about earlier, uh, there are different ways you could you know do your marketing. One is internet marketing. You can obviously do billboard, radio, and other types of media. But internet marketing is something that really is uh, uh, predominantly used by every car dealership today. Um, so what that means is how do you get your customers on the internet to your dealership and get to buy your products? Now, uh, Google is definitely uh, uh, the leader in uh, internet marketing. So they give you, you know, you can define AdWords or words that you want, uh, you know, Defined in Google, it's a service Google provides, as you probably know. Uh, you can search when you search by when a consumer search by those words. If you want your listing or your com your uh, your dealership name to be in the results of Google, then you'd have to you know purchase those adwords from Google. So that's a piece of uh, you know internet marketing that uh, Google you know uh, 
have captured almost 80% of that customer base. And uh, uh, so your listing will show up as part of a search. And uh, once you see the, when once the consumer sees the listing, uh, they would click on the link and they would be directed to your website. Now, there could be different types of AdWords that you subscribe with Google and you could have even with Yahoo or some other, you know, Bing and some other companies as well. But you want to know as a marketing manager within the auto dealership, what is the medium that my consumers are using to come to or responding to my ads or how they are getting to my website? Uh, so we have a very neat mechanism of enabling customers, auto dealership customers to track that and be able to measure and manage how their internet marketing campaigns are bringing uh, results and bringing consumers to their website. Uh, so as a result, uh, uh, as part of this feature, uh, we we provide that data. Uh, you know, we integrate it with the Google Analytics program, which is which is a which is a tool that Google provides. Uh, we integrate the data and the results that we find uh, back into Google Analytics. So a marketing manager that is who is used to uh, using Google Analytics to uh, monitor some of the other aspects of their marketing, internet marketing. Uh, they could also see the data of how many of such clicks or how many of those consumer searches resulted in actual sales and, uh, you know, uh, tangible uh, results. Uh, so that's a great uh, feature that, uh, you know, uh, that allows, you know, as you said, uh, Craig was mentioning, the marketing uh, dollars that you spend a month is quite a, uh, quite a bit. And uh, it's very important and critical for the organization to make sure you can measure and manage uh, what kind of activity it brings and what kind of results it brings. So we are able to provide uh, the marketing department of auto dealerships the exact measurables on how they are performing as far as their internet marketing campaigns are concerned. So that's uh, in, a, in a quick summary about the Google Analytics feature. Uh, this is something that uh, you'd only find with 5 uh, and uh, combined with the other things that we just saw today, you know, it makes a very compelling reason for uh, uh, auto dealerships to uh, look at such products and essentially uh, benefit from it. Okay, thank uh, you. Don, uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, since we have a few more minutes, you, I think you have a couple of screens on your desk, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Can you just pull that up quickly, show some of the relevant screens of the Google Analytics? Yeah, I've got a, a couple screenshots here. Hold on one second. So this is the, the Google Analytics page uh, that you can see uh, through the, their Google's uh, web page. And then through our software, you actually have a, a campaign plan where you can go through and uh, add the, the tracking ID for that campaign from Google Analytics uh, into our system and then assign the 800 numbers or local numbers that are associated with those Google AdWord campaigns into our system. So when you see a call generated into your system based off of that 800 number or, or the ID number, we'll know which Google AdWord uh, generated that, uh, that call into your system and be able to provide that information back into the Google Analytics to see how, many, how much traffic is being generated from those ads. So if you can go back to switch back to that report, Google Analytics report, Don. Uh, sure. Yeah, this is what the marketing department of managers would be looking at, and they'd be seeing that how many uh, conversions they had based on you know what happened on the call, as well as how many calls they received on each of those uh, voice lines to be provided as part of uh, you know Google search. Uh, so it's a very interesting, unique, and uh, very beneficial feature. Uh, definitely, if you have more uh, details, then if you have any questions, you can definitely reach us uh, and we can help you with. Uh, I know moving on, Crystal, we, we need to cover some of the polling questions as well, so please uh, go ahead. Okay, I will take back control here. OK. 
Okay, so let's go back to polling. Do a couple more polls. This is for our dealers again. Give you a few seconds to answer. Okay, I'm going to close that and share the results. And we'll do a couple more questions here. There's another question for our dealers. We can move on to the next question, Crystal. I think right. We have time. We have a minute more. Okay, and that's the remainder of the polling questions that we'll show. I'll go back to the PowerPoint presentation, and I'd like to again thank you for coming to our special webinar today, and thanks to Craig Sorensen from. Uh, Shepard Motors and Mark Stevens from Smith Communications. So if you'd like to contact us, please make sure to do so. Our telephone number is 503-439-9338. You can reach us at sales at triviumsys.com or visit our website at www.triviumsys.com. And also at Smith, their toll-free number is 800-859-1654. You can reach Mark Stevens directly at Mark at me.com and visit their website. They've got a great website and so does Shepherd Motors. I love their website. Uh, www.me.com and uh, again, thank you so much everyone for joining us. We appreciate your, your sharing your time and, with us and uh, uh, hope you uh, all have a great day. We'll keep it open for a few more minutes for any questions that they may have. Okay. Just uh, five more minutes. We can leave it open in case. Okay. We can Thank you. So, attendees, uh, please feel free to uh, type in your questions, uh, and uh, we'll definitely answer those uh, uh, in person. And there was one question uh, uh, that I, I saw I, I should address here. The question is, what's the biggest port count that Trivium supports? Uh, can it support a combo of legacy, which is digital and analog, and IP endpoints? Uh, the answer to that is, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can scale from a few ports to hundreds of ports. Uh, so the scalability is definitely one of the strengths. Uh, the next the part of the question is, can it support a combo of legacy, meaning digital, analog, and IP endpoints? Uh, the answer is we can adopt to any technology. We can combine. A customer could have three, all three different technologies in the same business. We could essentially interface with all three and still provide the business user a seamless user access and interface to one, you know, one place to access this information. So the answer is yes, uh, we can combine different technologies within the same installation and present the same results as far as the business user is concerned. And uh, one of our largest customers, just to give you an idea of the port count that we support, uh, has about 30 PRIs, which is 30 times 23 ports. Uh, that's almost 600 plus ports. Uh, and uh, that's a very active call center, uh, and uh, uh, they, they are in the uh, healthcare business side. Uh, the 
Yeah, and uh, of course, there are case studies available on our dealer portal, and uh, most of the people attending this webinar are dealers or uh, prospect resellers of Chivium. Uh, so uh, if you don't have access to the dealer portal today, please uh, contact Crystal, uh, and you can contact info at triviumsys.com, and you can get that detail. Um, there was another question uh, about whether the recording is done on the trunks um, or... So the answer is yes, it can record on the trunks, it can record on stations, it can record on IP stations. So there are two different categories of technology that we use. One is trunk-side recording, the other is station-side recording. So whether it's IP, whether it's trunk, whichever makes uh, more economic sense to use to meet the customer needs, we would use that. Um, the next question is, uh, can you record uh, SIP trunks? Yes, uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, the release for the SIP trunks support is coming up in Q4, uh, but today we do support the SIP uh, station side. Uh, so if you have a customer with uh, SIP stations like you know Polycom or uh, you know, Cisco or uh, whatever vendor phones that is, if it's in a SIP mode, we can record those. Uh, but as far as SIP trunking is concerned, the support for SIP trunking will be introduced in Q4 of this year. Um, the next question is, uh, what is the warranty on equipment? Uh, the equipment warranty, the standard is one year, uh, a repair and replacement warranty. There are options to do purchase extended warranty. You can buy for additional years, or you can even buy advanced replacement warranty. Uh, licensing fees, uh, the system, there was another question, what about the licensing fees? The system is, is a one-time uh, investment, uh, but yes, of course, in the second uh, years and third year, uh, in order to maintain your warranty as well as your support agreement, uh, there is a certain percentage of fees that applies to that. Uh, so it's not a licensing fee, but it's essentially a maintenance fee. Uh, a customer can choose to uh, purchase that uh, maybe for three years, five years, or even just one year at a time. Uh, the next question I see here is, uh, can one supervisor manage multiple installation sites from one source? Uh, I, you know, that question, I'm sure we need, we need to have a few more, uh, you know, interactive questions uh, answered to really get to the uh, bottom of that question. But I think uh, what I understand from the question is, uh, if you, as a vendor or a reseller, install it at more than one customer location, uh, one could be customer, uh, can you manage all of those systems from a single uh, source? Um, so... To answer that, uh, I, I think I mentioned earlier that we have a support module that helps remote management and maintenance. Uh, so it's almost for customers or for resellers to provide uh, service or management services uh, options. You can monitor these systems proactively, and you will know when there is a action to be taken from your part. So we do have a component, a server component, that we you can install at your customer site as well as you can install a component of that in your office, and you will be able to monitor and manage uh, your customer location. So the, the functionality of that piece is to really proactively know and uh, act on any kind of potential issues that your customer may be running to in the future or maybe are presently uh, experiencing. Uh, so uh, in a way, it allows you to sell managed services agreements to your customers. Um, I think uh, that answers some of the generic questions we had. Uh, the other uh, very specific questions to a customer or a specific situation, we have, we'll answer it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, appreciate all the questions, and thank you very much for the time. Uh, Crystal, at this point, we can close the session. And thank you all for attending. Craig and uh, uh, Mark, appreciate your time and your contributions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.